today's video we are going to discuss about the challenges in embedded system design so this is a video lecture series of embedded system subject okay so we have already done uh, two three videos on embedded system introduction hardware components software components design cycles then arm 9 architecture all those videos we have uploaded and that is in the playlist okay so here we are going to see the challenges in embedded system design so let us see one by one so the first one is amount and type of hardware needed so we all know that uh, embedded systems are application specific systems so whenever we are designing an embedded system the hardware and the software should be for the required amount it cannot be more or less okay so it should exactly fit the application so the uh, selection of the hardware the amount of the hardware and the type of the hardware everything is actually very very much important now let us take the case of a printer we know that printer is a embedded system so when we are selecting a printer or when we are designing a printer we have to take the printouts we have to uh, we need provision for inserting of paper taking of out of paper when the paper is jam and uh, taking uh, the printout the slot for taking the printouts so all these things are required so the hardware should be sufficient for all these purposes okay so amount and type of hardware needed is very important so optimizing of various hardware elements for a particular design and a particular application that is a very important thing that is a challenge okay next one taking into account the design metrics now what all are the design metrics example are power dissipation physical size number of gates engineering prototype development and manufacturing cost okay so manufacturing cost size power dissipation all these are very very important factors for a system to be designed so we have to optimize these parameters and make a system which is efficiently working by optimizing all these parameters and it is a challenge okay so second one is taking into account the design matrices okay third one optimizing the power dissipation we have already said that power dissipation is actually a very important thing now what all things we can do to reduce the consumption of power for any system power consumption should be as minimum as possible because only if the power consumption is minimum it can produce maximum output right only then we can say that the system is working uh, efficiently right so one thing we can do is we can reduce the clock another thing we can do is we can reduce the operating voltage so by taking any any of these methods we have to optimize the power dissipation that is a third thing that is a third challenge fourth one disable use of certain structural units of the processor to reduce power dissipation the processor to reduce power dissipation okay so here we have to disable certain structural units to reduce the power dissipation we know that for some cases uh, certain units won't be working it will be idle some other units will be working so in that cases we can shut down the idle units and this thing will enhance the power consumption i mean it will manage the power consumption and the power dissipation will be reduced right so we can go for these type of optimizations and it is a challenge then fifth one is process deadlines we all know that in operating systems mostly we are going for real time operating systems right we'll be using the required amount of hardware then the required amount of software and the power and the operating system that we are using here is a real time operating system and for every real time operating system the deadline is very much important and meeting the deadline is one of the critical challenges in any uh, embedded system okay so meeting the deadline of all the processes in the system while keeping the memory power dissipation clock rate and cost minimum is a challenge okay so the deadline has to be met and while the deadline is met the other things has to be also has to be also in a controlled way that is the power dissipation memory usage clock rate everything should be minimum okay so that is a challenge meeting the deadline and also optimizing these parameters is a is a challenge okay next one the sixth one is flexibility and upgradeability okay so we are designing a system but the system should have a scope for further upgrading there is upgradeability should be there consider that uh, you are designing a washing machine now in the future there can be some add ons 
or some additional features that the user is is uh, asking for so in that case we have to reprogram the system and we have to make some changes in the system and we have to upgrade it right so while designing an embedded system there should be a scope that is there should be a design scope for upgrading the system for adding additional features okay and also the system should be flexible so these things are that is uh, attaining these things is a challenge seventh one is reliability okay reliability is very important whether it is an embedded system or any other systems so manufacturing a system or designing a system which is reliable which is working in the in the required amount a required uh, way or in the in the suggested way in the said way it is very important okay so designing a reliable product by appropriate design and through testing verification and validation is a challenge so if you are saying that this system is going to be working in so and so way it is going to give so and so result and while we are designing the system the end product which is going to the market should be having all those functionalities or should be giving all those results so designing such a thing which is reliable is very very much challenging okay next one which is the eighth one is testing verification and validation testing means finding of errors and to validate that and to validate that the implemented software is as per the specifications and requirement and requirements to get a reliable product okay so we have to uh, test the system so once the system is uh, been designed we have to test the system this is when the system is made we have to test it we have to verify it verifying and validating means we are going to say that this system is actually working as per the required specifications only or the based on the requirements only the system is working so that thing saying of that uh, is called verification and validation okay so these all things are challenging that is first we are going to uh, make some specifications and after that we are going to design a uh, system which is going to uh, attain those specifications and when the product is made the specifications should be again met so this matching of or meeting of specifications by the end product it is again a challenging thing okay so these are the eight challenges that mainly uh, we face while designing an embedded system okay so these are the challenges in embedded system design so this topic is actually very important if you are going for a semester examination and also if you are going to attend any interviews of uh, embedded system area again it is very important so this uh, video lecture series is mainly focusing for interview preparation and also for semester examinations okay so uh, if you are going for semester examinations this will be one of the uh, you can say it is a more than 90 percentage short question so that's all about uh, the challenges in embedded system design i'm really hoping that you found the video useful if yes please do give it a thumbs up if you want more videos on embedded system and also if you want the videos on any core subjects of electronics you can find it in the playlist session okay so if you are interested in watching all those videos please do subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and keep on watching